Our next topic is the COVID and post-COVID economy. COVID has dominated 2020 and has a significant impact on the markets, both negative and positive, depending on the sector. What have been the winning and losing bets in the COVID economy? I would like you to cover these areas. Big tech, stay-at-home themes, banks, real estate, and leisure. Will people return to the office? Will people migrate out of big cities? As we've all transitioned to spending more time at home, stocks which are characterized as stay-at-home stocks have done the best. This includes things like Amazon that allow us to shop from our computer at home, Domino's Pizza, which is a completely delivery-centric model that doesn't have any uh, seats in restaurants, Netflix, and other streaming services such as Disney, uh, because we're all hungry uh, for things to watch in the home. Uh, those segments have all done very well. The segments that have been uh, really damaged badly by COVID, of course, have to do with travel, leisure, and entertainment. Airlines, of course, hotels, restaurants, movie theaters, even department stores uh, have all been major victims of COVID, but also, not as obviously, landlords who aren't collecting rents from their commercial tenants and residential tenants uh, have suffered as, uh, a lot as well. So big tech has been a winner during the pandemic, during the COVID crisis. Uh, as a result of people staying at home, people, uh, businesses uh, needing to have their employees work from home, there's been a huge demand for anything to do with cloud computing, e-commerce, and as a result, a number of what we call the FANG stocks, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google, Microsoft, have all been tremendous winners. There's also been a number of fringe companies that have come out of nowhere, such as Zoom or DocuSign or Peloton. These are companies that truly benefit from people not returning to the office or working out from home or working from home. Uh, we don't believe that those are structural winners, but we do believe that the big companies, the big tech names, such as Facebook and Amazon, are going to be winners going forward and will be winners under any types of scenarios. Ultimately, once these, many of our behaviors have changed, people have figured out that it's so much easier to order goods online and have it delivered the next day instead of waiting an hour in a store or driving to the store to pick it up. And so even if we do see a vaccine and we see relaxing of the COVID crisis, we don't think that uh, companies like Facebook and Amazon, Netflix and Google are going to lose. And uh, in fact, their businesses will be bigger and better in the future. The, the companies that were hurt by the pandemic, by the shelter at home, uh, it, it, businesses that are involved in travel or leisure or experiences, as well as companies involved in banking, financial services, oil and gas companies, anything to do with really the economy moving around has been hurt as a result of the pandemic. Uh, we're starting to see uh, uh, an indication that there's going to be more vaccines going forward. And so the stock market reacted over the past couple of days quite violently and positively to some of those names that were, have been underperformers. We think that there's tremendous pent up demand for travel, for leisure activities, for experiences. Uh, however, until it's safe, those, those activities are going to be constrained. But we think by 2022, some of those names that have really underperformed, companies in, in those sectors, uh, hotels and, and leisure and airlines should benefit and could see a full recovery to their earnings uh, and, and similar results to what they did prior to COVID. So I would categorize the winners and losers during COVID into two categories. Those that had a temporary impact to their financial results um, as a result of the pandemic, and those that had a permanent, those that experienced a, a permanent shift in consumer behavior. So in the temporary bucket, I would put things like elective surgeries, uh, restaurant consumption, or, or even concerts, where it's very likely that people are going to go back to concerts uh, as much as they did before COVID once we have a vaccine and once it's safe to do so. And then on the other hand, for the companies that experienced a, a permanent, um, a more permanent impact in, in consumer behavior to their businesses, this would involve things like um, 
I think movie theaters, uh, cable TV, or, or, or even something like uh, shopping, at a, shopping at malls, for example, where I think it's very unlikely that consumers are going to go back to participating in these activities at the same levels as they did before COVID began. There was some positive news this week with regards to vaccines. Why the huge reaction to the Pfizer announcement? This week when Pfizer announced that their new vaccine showed 90% or better efficacy, the market uh, went uh, nuts on an upward trajectory. If we finally see an end to the COVID crisis, as Prime Minister Trudeau referred to it, a light at the end of the tunnel, obviously that's uh, tremendous for the economy. It allows us to plan in the future, uh, even if it's six months in the future. If we know when the end is, companies can start planning for capital projects. Uh, businesses that have been closed down can think about when they're going to reopen. So it's tremendously good news, and we saw at one point the Dow Jones average up uh, almost 5% in one day, uh, which is a huge move. It's funny because the stock market kind of knew there was eventually going to be a vaccine. This is not a surprise in the sense that we have so many companies working on a vaccine. I think it was ultimately good feelings about the efficacy of Pfizer's vaccine. And the stock market was, is anticipating and was really hoping to get some kind of good news. We've had so much uncertainty so far in 2020 that any good news is positive and, and, and the markets are really excited about it. Uh, the vaccine is a game changer, absolutely. It's the announcement we've been waiting for. Pfizer is the first company to announce the uh, successful phase three trials. We're still hoping for many other positive announcements going forward. And now the hard part begins, the distribution, the inoculation, how it's all going to work and how long it's going to take. But no question, we all know the market is forward looking and it's anticipating the day when uh, planes are back up in the sky, when we're all traveling again, when we're all able to hug our grandparents, and ultimately this bodes well for a full recovery across the globe. So to me, um, the, the sharp reaction to the, the Pfizer vaccine announcement really shows how forward looking the market is. So if you take a company like the Live Nation or, or Delta Airlines, like they had raised enough liquidity to survive, uh, to survive even if, if society was, was closed through the winter and even through the summer probably. And everybody who was going to invest, everybody who was going to invest in these companies already understood the predicament that they were in. So for them to have a vaccine possibly being rolled out in January or, or March of next year, when Live Nation is burning $175 million of cash every every month, it's, it's extraordinarily exciting. My last question on the topic of COVID, how long will it take for the economy to return to normal? Nobody knows how long it will take the economy to return to normal. And I think it's going to be enormously variable sector by sector. For example, if people have gotten out of the habit of going to movie theaters, movie theaters could take an awful long time to recover. I think restaurants will recover very quickly. I think there's huge pent-up demand for travel and leisure, so I think hotels and airlines will have a very fast recovery. I think commercial landlords might have a long road ahead of them because people have gotten used to working from home, and technologies such as video conferencing have made many companies question whether they need as much office space as they have, and if that's the case, there could be a lot of uh, vacancy uh, in commercial office space for a long time. We've already seen a V-shaped recovery in a lot of sectors, in a lot of industries. Uh, there's been huge pent-up demand for tangible goods. The inventory of housing in the U.S. is at all-time lows. You can't even get a boat if you wanted to or a jet ski. Uh, people have had trouble renting cottages. So strong recovery in a number of industries. But of course, there's been a lot of industries that have been hurt by the pandemic. And we all know those businesses, the restaurants, the nail salons, the hotels, the airlines. And those business of, businesses, of course, are recovering. 
but won't see a full recovery until there's a vaccine or some kind of herd immunity or some kind of be better rapid testing is achieved. Uh, ultimately, we believe that by early 2022, we will see a full recovery in the economy. However, you're going to see a full recovery in earnings from companies well before that. As we know, the S&P 500 right now uh, is driven by technology companies that seem to be structural winners and are going to continue to report positive earnings growth going forward. The companies that are recovering, the airlines, the hotels, the restaurants, should see recovery late 2021, and that's just icing on the cake. And this bodes well for the stock market and a reason why the stock market is already doing quite well in 2020. If we look at it from the perspective of the companies, um, the ones who are actually on the grounds, who are, who are trying to manage the day-to-day -day operations uh, uh, with everybody stuck at home, I think you can tell that in, in March and April, the data was pretty clear that most companies were in survival mode. They were trying to raise as much cash as they can, just trying to, just trying to take things day by day. And by the time Q2 rolled in, uh, when companies were reporting earnings in July and August. Things were a little bit better, um, but, but everybody was still cautious. Um, everybody was still trying to cut costs. Um, every, nobody knew what was going to happen for the rest of the year. And by the time, and, and, and as, as of today, um, when, I'm, when we're recording this, most companies have already completed reporting their Q3 earnings. Um, and the tone is night and day. Uh, people are feeling optimistic that things are reopening. Um, companies are hiring again. Companies are investing, making investments again, making acquisitions. And, and I think this feeds on itself because once companies are hiring again, then people have more money. And then the slowly, uh, the slow, the snowballs and, and, and that's what we're seeing in the stock market. And that's what we're seeing in the economy where most of the economic data would suggest that we did indeed have a V-shaped recovery. And, and this is supported really from the data from the companies themselves. If you look at the credit card data that Visa is, is putting out, they'll, they'll show that consumer spending is back to where it was before the pandemic. Uh, the data from, we own a company called Parkland Fuel who, who owns gas stations, and they will, they will tell you that uh, driving activity is back to levels that they were before the pandemic. And if you, if you look at companies like Stryker, um, which makes medical implants, they will tell you that elective surgeries, uh, elective surgeries at hospitals are, are essentially back to where they were before the pandemic began as well. So really, the, like, the only sectors that are still suffering today are, are those that are hurting from mandatory uh, border closures, such as the travel industry or concerts. And as we've seen from the vaccine announcement, those will probably come back soon as well.